Hello everyone, welcome to the Lightning Ball channel. Let's continue our review of the Tensura Light Novel Volume 9. After the breathtaking elegance of the concert, hardcore technical presentations and the puzzling financial crisis in the previous episodes, the second day of the National Foundation Festival offers yet another unexpected twist, a martial arts competition. Then, the unveiling of the underground labyrinth on the third day, this is where the volume truly shines. Here's a detailed look, peppered with some of my thoughts. Let's get started. On the morning of the second day, in the colossal arena that could accommodate over 50,000 spectators, the Monster Federation's martial arts tournament officially began. The winner not only achieves the highest honor in the Monster Federation, but if they are a native contestant, they can also be named one of the Big Four, personally endorsed by Rimuru. The other three of the Big Four are Diablo, Benimaru and Shion, representing the highest combat power among Rimura's subordinates. Thus, powerful representatives from various nations participated, including native contestants Gabta, Orc Lord Geld, and leaders of previously mentioned groups, Gozu and Mazu. After a day of battles, on one side, the hero Masayuki, as always, used his unique skill, the Chosen One, to effortlessly secure a victory and advance to the finals. On the other hand, the tournament's dark horse, Gabta, utilizing his summoned companion Ranga and cunning strategies, breezed through the challenges to also reach the finals. Thus, on the morning of the third day, Gabta and Masayuki stood on the circular arena stage, ready for a one-on-one -on -one battle. Having witnessed Gabta's prowess the day before, Masayuki was internally anxious. Accustomed to winning due to his unique abilities, he worried about confronting such a formidable beast. If his abilities didn't affect Gabta, Masayuki, a complete novice in direct combat, could only imagine a future of being overwhelmed. His nervousness even robbed him of his appetite, and despite considering fleeing multiple times, the trusting gazes of his comrades kept him grounded. The match commenced. After the host, Salka, introduced both contestants, the decisive moment was upon them. Gabta, uncharacteristically serious, cautiously advanced towards a nonchalant Masayuki, who watched with a smug grin. This unexpected behavior left Gabta puzzled, questioning his own intimidating presence. Fortunately, Gabta was prepared, intending to deploy a skill he learned from previous battles, Magic Wolf Summon. With a powerful shout, the space behind Gabta distorted, summoning Ranga. Gabta then initiated a wolf transform, merging with Ranga into a humanoid giant wolf. Salka excitedly provided commentary, and even Malin, watching next to Rimuru, energetically cheered for Gopta's impressive display. Masayuki genuinely panicked. Even as a complete novice, he could sense Gopta's overwhelming power and feared a fatal strike from those massive claws. By this point, Masayuki was ready to surrender, but Gopta wasn't about to give him that chance. Before Masayuki could react, Gopta vanished from sight. The audience held their breath, and then, before anyone could comprehend what happened, an explosion resounded beneath the VIP seating where Rimuru and others sat. When the smoke cleared, Gabta lay unconscious on the ground. Upon seeing the situation unfold, Rimuru was utterly speechless. Shion, standing beside him, stifled a chuckle, while Hakuru, Gabta's mentor, looked furious, finding himself at a loss for words. So, what exactly had transpired? To the average spectator, Gopta's movements were unclear. However, to Rimuru and his group, everything was crystal clear. In essence, Gopta had lost control over his speed. Even though he had transformed and harnessed the power of Ranga, his cognitive capacity remained based on his original self. A second in Gopta's perception was very different from a second in Ranga's. Consequently, Gopta, Entirely unaware that he had started running, dashed past Masayuki, slamming directly into a wall. It was all Gabta's own doing. The atmosphere in the venue grew tense, the spectators utterly confused. Yet, they soon attributed everything to Masayuki's prowess, cheering for his supposed victory. Diablo, acting as the referee, was about to declare Masayuki's win when Masayuki gestured for him to stop. Holding back a shaky voice, Masayuki claimed he had lost the match. In disbelief, Salka, the host, questioned him. 
Masayuki explained that he hadn't seen Gabta's attack coming and felt it was too soon to challenge the demon lord Rimuru, hence he forfeited. After saying this, Masayuki left the arena without looking back. The crowd didn't perceive Masayuki's departure as an act of fear but as a warning to the peace-seeking demon lord Rimuru. After all, Masayuki hadn't even drawn his sword. Cheers of that's our Masayuki filled the venue. People united in praise for him. With the fight over, a resigned Rimura took to the stage, commended each contestant, and officially named Gabba as one of the big four. The first Tempest Martial Arts Tournament concluded without incident. However, Gabta's challenging journey was just beginning. Perhaps due to her favorite contestant Gabta's embarrassing victory, Malim was not in high spirits. She declared her intentions to train Gabta. Although she spoke with a smile, her eyes lacked humor as she lifted Gabta with one hand. Assuring Rimura that Gabta would be fine, Malim mentioned that she would train him in the labyrinth where death wasn't final. She then dragged Gabta and Ranga away, with Rimura watching, hoping they would grow stronger. May God bless Gabta. As we mentioned before, Masayuki, the ever-lucky hero, advances using his quirky chosen one skill. Honestly, this ability might be one of the cleverest yet funniest power-ups in the Tensura universe. On the other side, the dark horse Gabda uses his wit and his bond with Ranga to push through. Their face-off, though filled with moments of comedy, reflects the essence of Tensura, blending serious stakes with light-hearted humor. The transformation of Gabda into a humanoid giant wolf is as epic as it sounds. Though as readers, we're left in a state of shock and hilarity when he, quite literally, runs into a wall. This twist is classic Tensura, subverting our expectations and giving us a dose of humor in an otherwise tense setting. Now let's talk about Masayuki and Rimura's post-tournament meeting. Rimura's empathy shines through, showing that behind the demon lord facade lies a considerate leader. This character depth is one of the reasons I'm so hooked onto the series. After the tournament, upon assessing hero Masayuki's abilities, Rimuru understood the reason behind Masayuki's overwhelming acclaim. Masayuki possessed a unique ability to stir people's thoughts and emotions. Yet, he lacked formidable combat skills, which explained his surrender after Gabta's mishap. Discovering the truth, Rimuru didn't threaten Masayuki. Staying true to the principle of coexisting with humans, and seeing a fellow Japanese, Rimuru asked Soei to relay a message, proposing a lunch together. As they met, a flustered Masayuki introduced himself. Recalling their last encounter when his companion provoked Rimuru, Masayuki felt awkward, hesitating to eat. Rimuru, however, eased the tension by mentioning his past as a salary man, urging Masayuki to enjoy the specially prepared Japanese dishes. Soon, Masayuki was lost in the taste of nostalgic cuisine, letting his guard down. After relishing the meal, he opened up about his troubles. Due to his desire to become a hero, he acquired the Chosen One skill after reincarnation. But it brought its own set of problems. Despite doing nothing, people misunderstood his actions. In a battle with a slave trader, he even became a revered deity. Masayuki's fortune allowed him to succeed without effort, leading to arrogance. But the recent fight made him realize the peril of a single misstep, prompting his sudden surrender. He also expressed willingness to serve under Rimuru in the Monster Federation. Throughout their conversation, Rimuru offered advice to the distressed Masayuki, suggesting that he become a beta tester for the underground labyrinth. By leading an expedition, he could maintain his hero status, foster good relations with the Monster Federation, and bolster Rimuru's reputation, all while drawing more adventurers to the labyrinth. Gratefully, Masayuki accepted. To ensure Masayuki and his team's successful labyrinth navigation, Rimuru provided him with powerful equipment and a guidebook. Thus, their meeting concluded, with Rimuru gaining a new ally. By the afternoon, the long-anticipated unveiling of the underground labyrinth was set in motion. Rimuru ventured to the deepest hall of the labyrinth, conducting the final checks. According to Ramaris's report, Malim had positioned four elemental dragons within the 96th to 99th floors of the labyrinth. Presently, she was gleefully frolicking with Gabta and the four flying dragons. 
On the other hand, the storm dragon Veldora had stationed himself at the 100th floor, awaiting the arrival of challengers. The labyrinth was all set and prepared. Rimuru, accompanied by Ramaris, arrived in the VIP room, anticipating the start of the unveiling ceremony. Meanwhile, amid cheers from the crowd, Finance Minister Malmau stood at the center stage of the arena. Holding a speaker in one hand, he announced the main event of the national celebration, the official unveiling of the underground labyrinth. He went on to provide a detailed description of the event. Given that thousands were in attendance, including nobles from various nations, the plan for the day was to guide multiple teams into the labyrinth, where guides would explain its intricacies. Their journey through the labyrinth would then be live streamed on a massive screen, allowing spectators to enjoy the live action of the challengers from a safe distance. Subsequently, the host, Salka, joyfully announced the opening of the labyrinth and began recruiting challengers. Taking this as her cue, Ramaris made her move and conjured an imaginary door leading to the labyrinth at the center stage, causing an uproar of excitement among the audience. Quickly, four teams of challengers stepped forward. The first to appear was the Heavy Thunder team, led by the bald warrior Ba Sun. Having missed the martial arts tournament, Ba Sun was keen to uncover the true nature of this seemingly impressive labyrinth. Following him were the Ellen's team, Masayuki's team, and lastly, a black-clothed swordsman named Guy, who was known as the Splendacious Sword Fighter. Guy had participated in the martial arts tournament, but had lost due to Gabta summoning Ranga at a critical moment. Now, he was determined to shatter the ambitions of any deceitful monsters within the labyrinth. With the challengers ready, the final briefing began. To ensure a smooth experience for those unfamiliar with the labyrinth, Rimuru arranged for four guides, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta, to accompany the four teams. Being beta test players, they also received free items, healing potions, resurrection bracelets, and return whistles. The resurrection bracelet was said to revive adventurers who perished within the labyrinth. The claim stirred unrest among the audience. However, to prove its efficacy, a volunteer was needed to test the bracelet's powers, a task no one was willing to risk their life for. Cunningly, Guy pointed at Maumile, urging him to test the resurrection effects. Anticipating such a request, Maumile fearlessly donned the bracelet and entered the labyrinth. To validate its function, Salka drew his sword, intending to strike Maumile. Yet, at that moment, Guy leapt in, severing Maumile's arm with one swift stroke. As Maumile screamed in pain, a smile crept on his lips. Guy then decapitated him. Maumile's body vanished in a flurry of light particles, only to reappear moments later near a temporary entrance on the stage. Not only was his severed arm restored, but even his clothing was mended. The audience erupted in astonishment, and thanks to Maumile's bravery, the resurrection bracelet received the best possible endorsement, alleviating any fears about challenging the labyrinth. The unveiling of the underground labyrinth is where the volume truly shines. The event scale, the intrigue surrounding the resurrection bracelet, and the drama with Maumile's on stage, death, only exemplify the meticulous plotting of the Tensura world. Guy's ruthless challenge to Maumile highlights the inherent mistrust between humans and monsters, a recurring theme in the series. The resurrection demonstration is perhaps one of the most dramatic moments, proving that Tensura isn't afraid to push boundaries. The unpredictability of the moment leaves readers both horrified and enthralled. Alright, that's all for this video. In the next episode, we'll delve into the specifics of each team's journey within the labyrinth. Please like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.